evening, everyone. I would like to call the school committee meeting for Monday, September 12th, 2022 to order. If we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to remind everyone that this meeting is being broadcast uh, live via Ustream at uh, youtube.com uh, backslash DHS TV media. Also is being taped for future broadcasts on both Channel 9 and Channel 18 DC TV. And uh, there's a number of dates and times that it's on and we appreciate it and I usually try and find places to put them in extra. I've noticed that the past couple of weeks. So we appreciate the publicity. Uh, I will ask also if you have uh, any cell phones, pagers, beepers, things of that nature, if you would put them on silent or vibrate, shut them off, uh, we would appreciate it. Um, at this point in time, uh, we've allotted 10 minutes on the agenda for public comment for any uh, items that are on the agenda tonight. So if anyone would like to come and speak, we just ask for your name for the record and what the topic is you wish to talk about. And don't all jump at once. All right. Seeing none, that's fine. All right. First order of business is the approval of the regular session minutes of Monday, August 22nd, 2022. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Oliver. Second by Ms. Ms. Waite. On the motion, any comments, discussions, chair hearing none? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right, at this point, some good stuff. <coughs> you wanna take this? I'll take Jean first yeah. and I'll take it. Okay, uh, looking for Ms. Sheridan, our fabulous food service director. <laughs> Pleasure's mine, ma'am. If you wanted to go and find the ideal candidate, she comes from the New York City Public Schools, which feeds a million kids a day. So we're gonna have lots to learn from her, and she's also gonna have lots to learn on, a, on more, you know, they're so specialized and we're so general. <coughs> so we are looking forward to it and being part of the community and being out in the schools and having a good time. Absolutely. So welcome, Santa. Welcome. welcome. Okay, so uh, we'd like to um, obviously a welcome, of course, but now we will move into welcoming our new teachers here, and we're going to have Mr. Thibault and Ms. Paveo, our directors of teaching and learning, kind of give a little introduction to our coordinators for the Project Time, and maybe a little uh, synopsis of how Project Time is going. Good evening, thank you, Dr. Gifford. Um, I, I just want to, uh, Thank you for the opportunity to be, be, to be part of this. I think one of the most important activities any um, of us can do is to support our new people as they come into our district. And so Project Time affords us the opportunity to, to do that and really um, you know, thank the mentors who take on that role as well. Um, so before we introduce you to our new staff, we're going to welcome our coordinators for Project Time. And just as a reminder, Project Time is our teacher induction and mentoring experience. Um, and so the mentors and the mentees under uh, the guidance of these two ladies that we'll introduce you to in just one moment meet for two full days in the summer and then monthly and really get acclimated. Um, some of them are really seasoned professionals to the profession, but really acclimated to Dartmouth and um, sort of their buildings and the way that things are going. And so, and we also have some brand newbies. So really getting people sort of um, familiarized with all of that. They do a lot of behind the scenes work um, on licensing and all of the things that we need to do to make sure that our people are successful. So without further ado, I will introduce you to Janine Tavares and Kelly Duart, who are our, ment our mentoring coordinators.
Thanks, everybody, for having us tonight. Um, we're really pleased to present our, um, the new staff for Dartmouth Public Schools. We're going to go in order of school, starting with our littlest guy. So starting from Cushman, we have Natalie Young, who is mentored by Samantha Richards. But Samantha cannot be with us tonight. But Natalie is here. Come on up. Come on down. <laughs> Natalie. Hello. Just wave. <laughs> <laughs> Um, from the DeMello School teaching fifth grade, we have Jenna Gifford, who is mentored by Jasmine Oline, um, another fifth grade teacher at DeMello. <laughs> and Jasmine is, also, <laughs> Jasmine is also mentoring Amy Romero, who is a third grade teacher at DeMello. Thanks, ladies. Um, from the DeMello School, we have Jillian Rodericks, a special education teacher mentored by Andrea Mino, also a special education teacher. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Um, from the Potter School, we have Jessica Cushing, a special education teacher, being mentored by Michelle Dias, a special education teacher. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Um, from the Quinn School, we have Caitlin Baptista, um, a new fifth grade teacher, being mentored by Wendy Candeas, reading specialist. Thank you, ladies. Um, Wendy is also mentoring Donna DeTerra, a fifth grade teacher at Quinn. <laughs> we have um, Nicole Pacheco, a grade three teacher, being mentored by Ashley Capper, a fourth grade teacher at Quinn. And Ashley is also mentoring Melissa Seamus, who could not be here tonight. Thanks, ladies. Um, we have Lindsay Perry teaching third grade, I'm sorry, second grade at Quinn, mentored by Laura Jenkins, second grade at Quinn. <laughs> and we have Lauren Dunn, a speech language pathologist, being mentored by Marianne Sorensen, speech language pathologist, both at Quinn. You want to switch, switch sides? Sure. I think we're safe. <laughs> okay, I'm going to announce the secondary new teachers. Starting at Dartmouth Middle School, we have Jillian Vandell. She is a SPED teacher for grade six. She's being mentored by Temple Mitchell. <laughs> um, next, we have Patrick Chilabato, who is the Dartmouth Middle School math and science grade seven teacher. He is being mentored by Sue Ubiera. the yellow bar. <laughs> For, oh, okay, I'll now, yep. Um, she's also, Sue, Sue Ubiera is also mentoring Campbell Stevenson. He is the math teacher at Dartmouth Middle School. Um, next, we have Amanda Meehan. She is the Dartmouth Middle School English teacher for grade seven, and she's being mentored by Paul LeConte. <laughs> yeah. He's got another one. He no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't, no. no I'm done. I'm done. That's it, one, done. one and done. <laughs> Next, we have Nicholas Simonetti. He is the Dartmouth Middle School SPED intervention teacher, and he is being mentored by Ali Cato Galligan, who cannot be here tonight. <laughs> Moving on to Dartmouth High School, we have Nicole <laughs> Branco. She is the Dartmouth High School English teacher, and she is being mentored by Will Higgins, who was unfortunately at UMass Dartmouth teaching his class. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Um, next at Dartmouth High, another English teacher, we have Rayanne Cabral, who's also being mentored by Will Higgins. Um, next, we have Kristen Johnson. She is a SPED teacher at Dartmouth High School. She is being mentored by Ashley Coker Pierpont. <laughs> next, we have Julia Dickinson. She is the Dartmouth High School art teacher. She is being mentored by Morgan Bozart. <laughs> We have Allison Medeiros. She is the new Dartmouth High School guidance counselor. She is being mentored by Nicole He. <laughs> and last but not least, um, this woman started today, so I give her a lot of credit for coming here today. Um, her name is Mary Jane Omar, and she's the new Dartmouth High School math teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Comments from my colleagues? Sure. I guess I'll start. Go ahead. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome all of our new staff to the Dartmouth Public Schools. Um, this is a great district, a great town. We're happy to have you here. Um, there's a looking through your biographies, there's a lot of um, wonderful diverse uh, backgrounds and um, I wish you nothing but the best and uh, we're very fortunate to have all of you here so thank you very much. Uh, I'll add my, my welcome and my thanks. Um, we're glad to have you on board. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll also echo that. The welcome and uh, nice to have you here. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, just uh, following up, you know, I also think it's you know so great to see that we have such a robust mentoring program. I know as a new teacher how important and critical that is, just to have that person that you can always turn to. So I also want to thank, send another thank you to all of your mentors, and um, I hope you have a fantastic, normal, and fun year. So. <laughs> We, we missed one, I, I can't remember if uh, when she was just hired, but Alicia Frick is here. Just, oh. Justine. Come on up. Come on up. <laughs> She'll be the, yeah. Alicia Frick. There you go. Cushman School <laughs> Outreach Worker. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say, it's, it's so some of them, as I was telling, uh, Mr. Oliver and Dr. Jenkins at our last meeting, and budget meeting, we, some of these hires were very last minute because I think I mentioned to the new teachers at Project Time as well, we're so thankful that you're here and, and investing in education because as you know, across the, the country actually, we're, we're down in people that are going into education. So as we said, we had someone start today. We had um, another teacher last week. Uh, we threw them in, meet with Kate, hurry up, get to Project Time. And then Alicia, same thing. Some, some of these last minute hires we're very grateful to have. So um, once again, we welcome you all to the district. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of echo my colleagues and, and welcome you here and welcome to welcome to our district. Uh, please uh, reach out to us if we can be of any help or any assistance at all. Uh, lean on your mentors if you have any questions, concerns things of that nature, they've been around, they know what's going on. If they don't have an answer, I can assure you there's someone that they know that has run into that issue or knows how to answer that. So there is plenty of resources available in this district to uh, help you out and please take advantage of it. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for investing in our children. It is greatly appreciated and does not go unnoticed. So thank you for that. And with that, since we have a three hour meeting tonight, <laughs> you know, and you guys need to get home and hopefully your significant others have made dinner for you. Uh, you're more than welcome to hang around, but if you'd like to, if you need to leave, we totally understand. No prompting needed. Huh? No prompting Bye. needed. <laughs> Elementary school. 
uh, Le Lindsay Perry was Liam's one to one and show. dedicated for his elementary years. Yeah. Yeah. And did you like him? Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. Really good friend. Yeah, yeah. He had two in elementary and went on to, you know, now she's mm -hmm. she still is a teacher. Such a There you go. <coughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on. Old business. Uh, superintendent evaluations, committee comments. We've talked about this a little bit, so start to try to get this and uh, bring this to uh, fruition over the next couple of meetings between next meeting and the one we have in October would, would be good, so. So when would you like our, um, the evaluations uh, to the, uh, the, the subcommittee? To, it's, uh, who, who's it's, actually it's, on it? <laughs> it's it's, it's, okay. it's Miss Amaral and it's, it's, it's Kathleen and, and myself. Uh, thank you, it's Kathleen, been a while. And Kathleen is doing all the computer work, so. <laughs> so I should send it to her? Yeah, send it, send it, send it to her, we'll, or send it to me. Yeah, okay. That type of deal, and uh, we'll we'll get Kathleen and I will get together, and we will uh, put everything together, fi kind of f finalize things, and uh, you know sit down and have a meeting with Dr. Gifford on it, and go forward from there. Perfect, uh, Mr. Chair. So looking at this, uh, I think in the brief here um, will be placed the uh, the summative will be placed on the 26th. So. Can you can you give me a, an idea? I, I need a, a date, a, dead, a deadline. <laughs> push him. Yeah, I mean. Can you tell me this date? That will be the day that I Yeah, that, and, and that's fine. Uh, this is not a, this is not, personally for me, this is not a good week type of deal. Uh, yeah, ba -da -da -bum. All right. You know, uh, Kathleen, help me out here. How does uh, next, uh, Tuesday the 20th if you get everything that was by the 20th okay. then either Wednesday or Thursday you and I can meet mm -hmm. if that gives you enough time yeah yeah, the 20th? yeah. That, does that does that work for you dr. Gifford it's for me okay mm -hmm. yeah we have a two by four space we can borrow <laughs> we do. okay huh? we do okay good <laughs> all right so the 20th is the deadline and then yeah the 20th the is wheel. the deadline and then Either, you know, 21st or 22nd, mm -hmm. we'll, Kathleen, you and I can get together. Mm -hmm. How's that? Yep, that works. Okay. All things. Okay. And we'll work out when okay. we'll go forward that way. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did have a couple of questions, but I'll reach out to uh, Dr. Gifford. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fine. I mean, if you've got, mm -hmm. yeah, no disrespect if you've got the technical questions. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> I'm not offended, believe me. <laughs> no, that's, seriously, that's I fine. I don't see much offending you, Mr. Nunes. No. <laughs> nope. nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other comments on that? You're good with those, mm -hmm. those dates, Dr. Gifford? Fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, on, next item on the uh, agenda is uh, a discussion, kind of a discussion that we started talking a little bit about last year and uh, has come back again, <coughs> excuse me, and that is the uh, st student, inv uh, student representation to uh, the school committee. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Shea is looking for some guidance because that's why we don't have a school committee rep at the moment. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let Mr. Shea kind of give us his thoughts and we can go from there. You want to make this way she's helping navigate some of this process too. <laughs> um, so oh, we sorry. traditionally have a... How it has gone in the past is that our student council elects one member to be um, a part of the as a part of the non-voting school committee member. Um, it appears that there's been a, an update to the section of it that you need a five to ten person advisory council mm -hmm. that is elected by their peers. So kind of just wanted the advice in how I advertise it and how we, we market to our students to run for the office and wanted to hear the thought of the school committee members. Okay. Dr. Jenkins. So I'll start because I brought this up, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a political scientist by yes. training and so I think participation in political processes is important. 
Um, you know, I came across a tweet by someone from MASC noting about student participation, what's required by law, mm -hmm. and I went and I did some investigation into state law. And mm -hmm. we weren't in compliance with state law. And, you know, this is not on anyone, right? Mm -hmm. This is just how it's been done for a long time. Um, but I do think what we need to do is to make sure that our practices are in compliance with what state law dictates. Um, I also am interested in, in having, and, and again, this has been a sort of historic practice, there's been a rotation of student reps to the school committee meeting, and I feel like sometimes we get less than sort of raw, honest, unfiltered opinions from them, and what I think we really do want is that voice, that participation on our committee. Um, and so I would like to see it be in compliance with state law, someone who is selected by their peers. Um, I think there's value in having repeated attendance at school committees. You learn about the process. I mean, this is an educational thing for students. They learn about the process. They learn about the issues. And I know there's been some concerns about the time commitment, but as a political scientist, I would argue this looks just as good on someone's resume as being part of a team or another club. So I really want to honor our students and encourage that, that debate. And so rather than having them sort of be picked by the administration or a select group of peers, I really want this to be sort of a democratic process, which I think is what state law requires of us. Yeah. Hey. Mary? Yeah, so I just, um, I think piggybacking on that and I some of the conversations, you know, I'm kind of curious, because I know, of course, we have the, the conventional student council and that, you know, has already been elected. You know, my understanding is this is a, you know, separate group and they would also have their own meeting, so it would be, and again, I think of student council, you know, being more activity use driven and that kind of thing, so they would be the representatives. So I guess my, you know, kind of as we extend the conversation, and Mr. Tebow and I had some conversations about this, and he had some, you know, ideas as well, is whether or not it might make sense within those five to almost have, you know, a randomly picked assembly of students. I think you, you, you had mentioned that too, and I think that was a, you know, um, Mr. Shea alluded to a scenario, uh, there was a school where they kind of I randomly picked students to serve as um, representatives so that you got a cross section of voices, but then you also had a leadership piece. So I think that would be kind of another way to get those different voices in. So I like all those thoughts. Um, again, those five members would be the elected by the student body, but perhaps, you know, we could have that mix as well. So, but um, yeah. Yeah. That was a Malcolm Gladwell podcast. If anyone likes Malcolm Gladwell, it's kind of, yeah. he's my favorite of all. <laughs> So I guess my question, I ha just to help Mr. Yep. Shea go forward with this, so because there's a distinction I'm seeing with advisory committee and or the, and the student rep, because yep. mm -hmm. we've had the student rep that has been coming from the school council, uh, right. student, student council, yeah. yeah. So it also says that the school committee would meet with the five member student advisory committee. So I think you would need to work the logistics out who's going to do that, when does that happen, and then what kind of you know, I think the, ki the the students themselves might want some direction and if they're going to run for this office, if it's an office, that kind yeah. of thing, what they're getting themselves into. And are we posting an advisor kind yeah. of uh, yeah. to, to oversee it? Yeah. So let me, yeah. let, let, me do, let me yeah. do let me do this. Let me read this. This is uh, Chapter 71, Section 38M of uh, Mass General Laws, mm -hmm. and it's titled Student Advisory Committees. And it says, school committees of cities, towns, and regional school districts shall meet at least once every other month during the month of the school is in session with a student advisory committee to consist of five members to be composed of students elected by the student body, <clears throat> excuse me, of the high school or high schools in each city, town, or regional school district. The members of such student advisory committees shall, by majority vote prior to the first day of June, and each year elect from their number a chairperson who shall serve for a term of one year. Said chairperson shall be an ex officio non-voting member of the school committee without the right to attend executive sessions unless such right is expressly granted by the individual school committee. Said chairperson shall be subject to all school committee rules and regulations and shall serve without compensation. A school committee may designate a student outreach coordinator for the purpose of ensuring the establishment of a student advisory committee and regularly informing the advisory committee of the school committee's agenda. So, 
it seems pretty clear to me that mm -hmm. they need okay. to be elected. They're, mm -hmm. they're, the, fi the five mm -hmm. party members are elected, and the way I read this is that they then elect one from the five of them mm -hmm. to be the school committee rep. Mm -hmm. And that person's going to be, that person, whomever it is, is our representative for the year. We'll sit up here. Yep. Yeah, yep. we'll sit here, you know, and again, you know, so that type, you know, and then, uh, The only, the, the only and, I, and I don't mean it, the only issue I see here is when do we as a committee meet with all five, all five of them? So I think that, I don't think it's all of us that has to meet with I, them. You know, I think we can have almost like a, we can designate a member of the school committee. Yeah. I, I can tell you. I can tell you in the district that I that I serve that I work in that we do have we have we have exactly the way that Dr. Jenkins presented it. We have a student advisory um, council uh, or committee, and then we have we have a, a member that sits at the table with the school committee. Um, and there is one school committee member that meets monthly with the student advisory council. Yeah. So it would be it would be one of us that meets uh, with the student advisory council. The, the Hang on, Mary, for a second. I'm going to, I'm going to put my municipal hat on for a second. Uh, the Division of Local Services has what they call an attorney for the day that you know you can call with legal questions and everything else. And I'm just wondering if this is one of those calls you make to to the to the lawyer of the day and <laughs> put it at them and, and get their get their interpretation on what exactly just you know are we meeting how many members of the committee do we need to have i mean it's si it's oh, silent to meet mm -hmm. to meet with the to, to meet with the students meet with the yeah. students that that type of deal yeah I, and you look at the masc policy that says the committee will meet at least once every other month while sc I mean, I guess while school is in session it refers to the months, but it could yeah. refer to during school time. <laughs> so, um, like during the day, right, as opposed mm -hmm. to at night. Yeah, you know, I mean, in well, let's, mm -hmm. let's cross one bridge at a time. <laughs> right, I'm just saying that yeah. the way that yeah. these things are written are somewhat ambiguous. Is it the whole committee? Is it not? Do, can we yeah. could we invite them here to meet with us? And, yeah, I mean, do we have to, you know? And is it one of these? Is it does it become a posted subcommittee? That that type of deal? I don't think so. But yeah, you do. Certainly, if you want to reach out, I don't see any harm in that. Yeah. All right, Mary. Oh, so I I know again we did talk about this last spring, and I had I did volunteer to be the outreach um, coordinator. I just want to give some credit to to Mr. Tebow, like not to put him on the spot, but he had done quite a bit of work on this as well, and I think. One of the things we discuss too when we talk about five, we have four classes, and you know, um, so you know, I just don't want to lose like his effort because he spent quite a bit of time, you know, looking into this and thinking it through and how it actually might function in the, with the high school students, and so that was, you know, again, just to, you know, because he did some of that background yeah. work as well. Yeah. Okay. Does so, that help? At all? <laughs> <laughs> that help, at so, Ryan. Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking, as far as like making connections, you know. Yes. Again, he's he's done yeah. some of that background. So I, I guess my question is, is because I think there's some logistics sides, but I know I need to hold an election of five students, right? right. And yeah. I and I and I kind of agree with the vision that has been talking. We have four grades, maybe two seniors, and one on the, each other grades. So you have kind of like a representation across the entire school. So uh -huh. one per grade. Um, we're gonna have to hold. Um, freshman class elections anyway so we can get rolling on that and get that position in place and we can figure out the the um the fine the nitty-gritty um i guess my question is is if they're meeting with the chair or someone on the school committee do i still need a, an advisor to do i need to post for a, a teacher advisor or are we okay with it being in the hands of all of you I, I personally think you should have an advisor. Should have an advisor. That's just, just teacher advisor. advisor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm just going down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
I think he's going to need it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that makes he's going to need it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, to, like, just uh, also is required because yeah. we're dealing with issues and policy. And so someone to help guide those students internally, you know, we may not know some of the, be as intimately aware of what's going on in the schools that are mm -hmm. at the heartbeat of uh, conversations among the kids and concerns. So yeah, that would Absolutely. be helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So on my end, I'll um, hold an election. I'll try to, I'll do one, one per grade except senior. We'll do two. And then um, we'll go from there. And then next year we'll do, we'll make sure that we have it by the 1st of June. So we'll get, well, it'll be a shorter term this year and then it'll be longer moving forward. That's great. Yeah. I appreciate the advice and support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. So over the next couple of days, I will we'll figure it out. Figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yep. All right. Any other old business? No. Nope. Okay. New business. Superintendent's update. Okay. I have a, I have quite a quite a list today. Oh, good. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so a couple of things. First of all, we did meet with. Um, as you know, we have an elementary SRO person that's that's going to be rotating around the elementary school. So I asked the chief, along with Sergeant Joe Raposa, who supervises the SROs, to meet with our elementary principals. So they have a, a sense of the expectations. It's new for us. So what can be expected of um, Amanda Tavares, who's the new SRO, and um, how she can work with with the uh, leadership at the at the schools and and help out and foster relationships. So that was one thing we did. That went very well. Um, I know Mr. Nunes is going to speak about the Special Olympics at the high school, so I won't speak about that. Uh, Wednesday is an early release day, and our focus throughout the district is going to be on safety drills, review of the protocols, building tours uh, that folks can view the exits and entrances, especially new people that if an emergency happened, they, they know the building well. Uh, the elementary staff will also uh, be given a timeline relative to the safe, safety action steps that are going to be happening throughout the year. We're giving folks a heads up on all of this. We've met as a team to discuss it both at the elementary and secondary level. Some of the examples of the things we'll be doing throughout the year are, as we did some, we did, uh, I guess, pre-COVID, if you will, uh, w walking field trips for the kiddos to come out and see where they would go for safety and all of that, uh, discussing, prep discuss discussing preparation in the case of an intruder, as I said, learning about exits from specific rooms, such as the gymnasium, et cetera. Uh, intercom scenarios were run where they would announce certain things and then they would get to discuss with their teacher what they would do at that moment. And um, of all, Eventually, we'll have evacuation drills with the elementary. We did meet with um, Craig Pimentel as well, who has done all our Alice training to talk about that, and he's working with the individual leadership at the schools to uh, coordinate that. Currently at the middle school, our grades six and seven have received all instruction on Alice protocols. Grade eight is tomorrow, and on Wednesday, the middle school staff will be doing a drill with the police presence. Um, and, school -wide, and a school-wide drill with the students will be completed by the end of this month. The high schools re reviewed their Alice protocols as well. That happened on the second day of school. And teachers also were um, asked to discuss that in the advisory period. And the drills are being planned for probably the week of the 19th. So we're really, um, and we've asked everyone to continue to document everything they do and make sure that everything is in place and nothing is um, missed. Uh, I asked Mr. Shea today how the high school cell phone policy was going. He said they haven't had an issue, so that's, that's good, good to know. <laughs> Uh, also, the district strategic planning process will begin. We've had some meetings to talk about this. Our plan is to develop what we're calling a bridge plan for this year that will identify action steps framed around those same principles that we used last year in the DIP and the SIPs. Uh, they were focused, if you recall, on monitoring for understanding, fostering a sense of uh, belonging, and ensuring great appropriate instruction happens with scaffolding. Um, we will be partnering with Learn Launch learn launch group through through desi uh, it's um free which is nice to engage in network meetings and support around just that one principle about the sense of belonging so that's one big piece of what will happen uh, be in our strategic plan so for an example for a bridge plan that is one action step that we're undertaking for this year we call it bridge because then the work this year will lead into the full three to five year strategic plan um, so this year's work will supplement um, 
the year's work on developing what we're calling a vision of a learner. You've heard of portrait of a learner. So we started this work during the summer's admin uh, retreat where we asked our teams uh, at each school level to brainstorm characteristics of what the learner should look like as they leave that level to move into the next level. Of course, culminating with the high school graduation. So all along, everybody has responsibility to prepare kiddos for the end result, which is gradu graduation. Um, and this work will not only support the district improvement plan, but also the high school's work with NEASC accreditation, which is always an ongoing piece. <clears throat> the wellness team, which we're just calling it wellness, what else? I, health and wellness. Uh, we made up a little new team. Uh, we included representatives from each level and also um, Katie Paveo, Laurie Jodwin, who supervises and works very closely with the nurses. Uh, we met to continue efforts to enhance our allergy awareness uh, efforts. And so what's happening is um, our lead nurse, Kelly Stoll, is drafting, which she has done, updated guidance to supplement um, the existing policy, which I still say is a good policy. It's just, again, bringing awareness to it, heightened awareness, and making sure it's followed along with other protocols, proactive protocols. So some of the things, as examples, all schools receive training on life-threatening allergies by our nurses in the beginning of the year. <coughs> and signage has been hung in the schools. And this includes rein, um, the reinforcement of just, um, I, as I said, everything that we've been doing. Uh, the nurses will work with individual parents of students with allergies to discuss how to handle classrooms and seating of their child. Because sometimes we've, um, children have been put on you know, tables. We've, uh, identified them as out and some parents actually have complained about that so we want to give the parents um, give them full understanding of what's going on but give them the option of how they want their child treated uh, we've already told people no food is to be brought in from home to be disseminated class-wide that includes teachers as well as sta um, parents teachers may not distribute food candy snacks etc protocols and permission slips are being developed for school events such as PTO sponsored events We've purchased um, and we will continue to purchase nutritional acceptable snacks that can be provided by the nurses or social workers, outreach workers to students who need things during the day because a lot of times teachers will have that on hand like a granola bar or something, but we're making it go all through our, our us ourselves. So it will be purchased by us and um, students will either go to the nurse or like I said, a social worker, et cetera, where they feel comfortable. Uh, we have worked hard with uh, technology, uh, Aspen and Mosaic, which is the program used in the nutrition um, department. Uh, we got it up and running. It was not talking to each other as well as it should have been. And so that's up and running. And um, the cafeteria work, as I checked today with Laurie and, and Kelly Stoll as well, can now see updated allergies in the system. And uh, when the students move to the line, so they get that alert up and they're well uh, um, been trained and um, genes by what to look for um, and so we still have a little bit of tweaking to do on that but Tom Faraz is working on that as well with some automatic updates because the language was different in Aspen and Mosaic so they needed to update that language and, and again Kelly Stoll our um, lead nurse has been doing a lot of work um, she and uh, Jenny Gates our other nurse were also on the committee that worked through this and really talked through some of these things uh, they had to manually update some of the medical alerts. So it's been a lot of work. Um, but it's a work in progress. And once these drafts, we have, like I said, a lot of permission slips. We want to make sure, like, the secondary level uh, advises parents if there's, um, like, the after prom, for example. There's lots of food there. But we just want to make sure we let people know. This is what we have. And, and you know, we always say the secondary level certainly are more responsible for themselves. But that kind of thing. Um, just all kinds of permission slips and, and uh, for example, our special education programs, it's, uh, a lot of times use um, token economy and a lot of times it's a, it's a little candy or something. So we want to make sure that that's cleared by parents as well. Um, so that, again, a lot of work and probably a lot of people too that's working hard on this and we'll continue to uh, update the staff on this. The, these protocols have not been put out to the staff but because a lot of it's in draft, except for like, don't bring food in, don't give the food, no dissemination of food, et cetera. Um, and the basic updating, uh, reinforcing of the existing policy. And then last but not least was just, I had the student advisory uh, questions, but we just went through that. So that's what I have. All right.
long-winded tonight. No, that's fine. No <laughs> problem. Well, it's new school year. It's a lot. new school year. New school year, a lot of things going exactly. on, so that's good. Any questions for the superintendent? Oh, that's great. Mm, good. Mr. Oliver. Thank you, Mr. News. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gifford. Sure. Uh, thanks to all the uh, administrators that are here tonight uh, for a good start to the school year. Um, I, you know, knock on, maybe this is wood, um, <laughs> knock on wood. Um, I, I've heard no major complaints. I know always transportation is usually uh, the biggest issue at the start of the school <laughs> year. Um, it seems to have gone rather smoothly. I know that uh, speaking with my daughter, who's a junior at Dartmouth High School, as well as uh, other community members, it just feels good to be um, back to some kind of normalcy and uh, just a different feeling this year. So um, just thank you to your team, Dr. Gifford. Good. Um, to yourself as, as well as everyone else here um, today. Um, you know, I, I think we have a lot to be proud of. And um, yeah, I look forward to uh, what the year will hopefully bring us positively. Um, I do have a couple, just a couple of uh, questions. One being, uh, as far as the allergy goes, the allergies go, thank you for, um, for updating the committee on that. I know there was a, a lot of um, emotional a discussion at the last meeting about that. Um, if you could, could you uh, once the uh, the procedures or the mm -hmm. uh, the guidelines, if you could share those yeah, with the course. committee, I, I would just like to at least myself, I'd like to be yep. able to to just take a look at those and sure. um, moving forward. Uh, along with that is. Is there, an, are we outright banning uh, the district food, specific foods like peanuts? Are we like peanut, can I, I, my understanding, are we completely peanut free? We haven't, are, to be honest. Okay, we, so. We do identify and like even I like went around the schools and some of the signage will tell explicitly what's in that class. Um, and so it's like on a class, yep. class by class yes, basis? Yes, or? we have, yeah. that's okay. what we've done. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was just curious yep. about how how that's working. Um, my other que my other question is just more of a comment. Um, in reviewing the website, I'm just curious. It doesn't look like there's a lot of going on in the calendars on the on on the school sites mm -hmm. as well as the the district site. So I'm just wondering, it, it, are we using a different calendar? Or are we like for all of our events and all that, because I was just happened. I, I was actually just looking up to see when the open houses were, and I Not couldn't I there. couldn't find them on on the website. Yeah, we we always have depended on the schools to keep their own calendars. I, I'm pretty much thinking everybody just hasn't gotten to it. But okay, yeah, I, I was just I was just curious. Yeah. Um, because I I think you know we can uh, make a bigger effort. <laughs> I know it's just that's minor in the grand no, scheme. It's, it's minor it's, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. But I think we we have an opportunity um, with our website as well as you know social media sure. to really promote the district and yeah. all the great things that we're doing here. Um, as we talked about previously, our you know our, our looking our our enrollments kind of leveled off. Yeah. Um, and we're not seeing a lot of growth. So um, you know any good thing that can happen or that sure. we share especially at the high school level to keep more students um, right. in it district. Certainly be more robust for sure. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's all I have, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dr. Jenkins, Good, thank you. Kathleen? No, I, I just thank, thank you for all that mm -hmm. you know, information, the update. Um, I would like to see like to um, my colleague you know, requested the final sort of version of yep. all that's yep. sure. happening, the updates. Uh, but I do appreciate also, you mentioned um, I think of family engagement. You mentioned like um, mm -hmm. bring, uh, allowing for family right. choice in terms of options exactly. around um, how it's identified and what, what you know specific yep. to the student. Uh, I think that's a great thing. Right. Instead of you know, oftentimes we just tell them the rules and they have to follow. But it, it's yep. great to see that that little yeah. bit of work with us to see what what meets right. the needs what, of what your child. What they want child. best for and, their, their yeah, child. Yeah. So I I appreciate that effort, um, and that's Good. all I have. Thanks. No, I was just going to say, I thought it was really impressive to hear the cafeteria workers are really, you know, that involvement. I think that that's a yeah. fantastic step because, you know, um, you can spend a lot of time there. Okay. And I guess, um, I think when we were talking at our last meeting, we mentioned the bus drivers. I know that seems, is there any, are there any conversations that are happening there? Again, like with, Jim you know, EpiPen, or do they have a list of students who might be riding the bus that have those allergies? Just, I mean, technically there's no eating on the bus, but I know, you know, we you know kids are kids and, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, we can we can certainly look at that. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, incorporate that into the discussion. Okay. All right, that would be good. Thank you. That's it. Very good. Thank you. All right. That's I know. All I have. Okay. <laughs> I know. Uh, speaking of open houses, I know uh, middle school was last, last week. week. What do we got? I I've got it on my calendar. I don't have it on top of my head. Okay. Thursday. Well, I know 
I have elementary here Thursday. It's Open next week. Yeah. Elementary is, is this Thursday? All the ele all Thursday, of them? Thursday mm -hmm. for all. What's that? Yeah. You already had yours. Okay. El elementary schools are this all, week. All Thursday. All Thursday. And what? And then Mr. Shea, when is the high school? The high school is the 22nd. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Uh, yep. Report of the chair. All the good stuff. Uh, <clears throat> uh, fall sports are ongoing and I uh, off to a pretty good start type of deal. Had a tough game Friday night against mm -hmm. Bishop Stang with that last second block field goal, but everybody played hard. So good luck to uh, good luck to them as as they go forward. Uh, our high school music department is, uh, and this is to my One. colleagues, is uh, we've got two home shows this year. One on October first. And one on October 8th, uh, yeah, no, 15th. Mm -hmm. I got the dates backwards. Uh, so I'm going to need, if someone is available, those are things. Yeah. yeah, I know you're there, but yeah. Kathleen, okay. Yeah. I know you enjoy it. October 15th. October 15th. You can uh, count me in. Okay. That's the earlier one, right? That's the, that's the one. one. That's the one that's, yeah, that starts at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. First. I'll get you the, the first is a 6 o'clock start and like 9.30. I know. That's way past my bedtime. Nah, it's, you know, <laughs> not mine. Huh? Ryan's, Ryan's got, Ryan's Ryan's got that one. There we go. But just let, just let me know what just show up and yep. we'll work through and we'll be fine. You said it's at 4, though, on the 15th? Yeah, I'll get I'll I'll okay. what I'll do. I've got the times at home, Chris. I'll email right. them to you, and get as I'll email them to the four of you as to uh, what I'm it is at the moment. I'm not going to be able to make either. Huh? I, I'm out of town and I have a campus event, so the okay. other weekend, so I won't be able to make it. I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. Hey, it's the way those few years for me, so I will huh? be there. It, that's it. the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> it's, you know, we can't do that. Uh, I think we all got the email that. Uh, Ms. Gunther sent us this afternoon, thank you very much, and the committee will indulge me. I'm gonna read this because boy, this is, when we talk about our kids, this is it. This is uh, from the Special Olympics Unified Championship Schools. Uh, it says, Dear Principal Shea, and it says fall of 22, 2022. <coughs> On behalf of the Special Olympic International, we are honored to declare Dartmouth High School an official Special Olympic National Banner Unified Champion School. Under your leadership, the Dartmouth High School staff and students have demonstrated their commitment to inclusion. Your school community has shown impressive determination and is helping us move toward our, our collective goal of creating a truly unified generation of young people who embrace differences and lead social change. You are literally redefining the future as you make your communities more inclusive of all people with an intellectual disabilities, and in doing so, make the world a more acceptable place for all. Since you've come this far, we want to personally challenge you to push even further. Continue to support the innovative minds of youth and adults in your school and be leaders in inclusion in your community. We look forward to seeing Dartmouth High School forge new paths towards inclusion for people of all abilities and transforming the world in its process. Seize this moment and claim your rightful place as agents of dignity and unity. Best wishes, Timothy Shriver, PhD Chairman, or Doctor, I should say, or I should have just said Dr. Timothy Shriver, Chairman, Special Olympic International, and Andrea Khan, Vice President, Unified Champion School, Special Olympics, North America. So, I'd like to add it was uh, one out of twelve of Massachusetts schools that wow. got that, and one out of one hundred and sixty-four in the state. Wow. Good. Shannon. So I'd like to congratulate Mr. Shea, to whom the letter was addressed, but I will also <laughs> like to acknowledge that he has been principal um, for just a few months. So I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Mr. Tebow yeah. um, sitting back over here and, and also all of the building administration and staff and teachers who have contributed to this effort. I think yeah. it's a it's a great honor and it reflects really well on our on our, our entire community. school community. Yeah. Entire community, what we, yep. what we do. Yep. Agreed. I mean, you know, you go by the, you know, they have that big field day and they were finally able to have that big field day. And, you know, you go by and I don't know how many students there were, but it was just great to watch them. And yeah. you know what too, again, our entire district, all the elementary schools, they promote so much inclusion and 
top, you know, acceptance and all of that. So leads up. It's yeah. not, Mr. Chibo, I think, wants to say oh. something. <laughs> yeah, well. You will indulge him, Mr. Chair. <laughs> yep, not a problem. What's going on? Thank you. So um, I think I speak for Mr. Chair. I certainly appreciate the accolades, don't get me wrong. But really, this is made possible by people like John Bro and Paul Paveo and um, yeah. you know Mike Capello and all of our staff who work with our, our students and really promote and build that inclusive environment. The letters get addressed to the principals, but it's really the work of those staff members who make it possible. So they're the ones who really deserve to be recognized, and I just wanted to make sure that we shared that. So thank, thank you. you. No problem, thank you. Okay. Uh, we've been working on uh, Dr. Gifford, Mr. Kiley, uh, Chris Oliver, Jake Ventura, myself, uh, have been working on a plaque and such uh, for the Indian situ uh, logo. logo and such, and have come up with a, not so much the design, the design is there, but the wording and everything else, and it's been audited, and they're on their way, and uh, couple of things that are going to happen. Uh, we're working on uh, the 23rd, I think. Am I correct? The mm -hmm. 23rd? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, during the day here to have kind of an unveiling, kind of like what we have uh, for the veterans. This will be in the uh, gymnasium uh, of, of a plaque. And also at the uh, football stadium that night, uh, another plaque and a stand uh, and we'll have a, a special kind of like they did with the veterans plaque uh, at halftime of the football game do it you know unveiling the uh, showing off the uh, the plaque for the Indian uh, logo uh, at halftime of that game so I just wanted to bring the committee up to date with that um, looking at uh, like I said, the football game on the 23rd side, it's at seven half times, you know, eight o'clock, quarter of eight, that type of deal. Um, the time for uh, the 23rd here, we haven't solidified that that time yet. This is September? September 23rd. It's on the Friday. We have a home football game that night against Old Rochester. Okay. It depends on what time it is. I yeah. No, I, work, yeah, we don't right? have any yeah. set time. Right. We haven't, we haven't, we haven't come up with a time yet. And Once it, you establish that, I think we'll all be able to figure out. Yeah, we can yeah, make yeah. It. and that's fine. And somewhere down the line, sometimes, unless you know, it, unless you do it at like two o'clock in the morning, that's yeah. the, the way, the way, it, the way it just, right? the way it just works out. And yep. believe me, we, I understand, I totally understand that. So, so I got that. And the last thing I have is. Uh, just want to take a moment to uh, wish uh, Tracy Oliveira much happiness and health as uh, she retires this week from our school district all the years that she's put in here and the work that she has done, uh, you know, getting project time off with the curriculum and things of that nature. So just wanted to take an opportunity to wish her uh, much health and happiness and enjoyment. And that's all I have. Anybody else have anything? Mary? So tomorrow the uh, Dartmouth Education Foundation is going to have our uh, grant award ceremony um, here in the Library Media Center at 430, so I'm really excited for that. We have um, some amazing projects. It's really a testament to folks' creativity and hard work and really wanting to bring some exciting projects to their students. So um, I'm really excited about that, so we'll be doing that. and then. Um, on a slightly different note, uh, we had talked about the history committee and uh, I met with Mr. Tattlebaum and so we were moving forward with that as uh, we're co-chairs on, on that effort. So we are having a meeting, we're just kind of trying to narrow down the first dates, um, just with kind of a small group of folks to start and then um, kind of as that group we're going to try to you know, think a little bit more about the direction what we want to accomplish, um, really get that mission statement down as well as the charges of that committee and then you know, talk about additional folks. We have someone coming from the, his the History Commission um, 
as well as you know some of these folks here. So I'm excited to see that. You know, he's very enthusiastic, and we had a great starting point. So good. yeah, so I think it's gonna be good. All right, pretty good. We good. All right. Our next meeting is the 26th, two weeks from tonight at 6.30. All right. That being said, you want to start? Okay. Are we good? All right. So with that, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved second. by Dr. Jenkins, second by Ms. Waite on the motion. Any discussion? Nope. Chair hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good night. Have a good week. Thank you. Okay.